Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and allow me to welcome you to tar -N, the land of legends. And today we're over at the eastern edge of the continent of Spiraling, on the sprawling coastline of this seas of circumstance. Now then, here we can see a small group of dwarves, seven of them, who have come from a nearby dwarven civilization known as the Glad Lash. Now, these dwarves here call themselves Atast Thon Gitkar Migrur, the brave deep fisher of oceans. And their fortress will be called Orel Gulnas Kithil Migrur Rosar Nigitkar, or Water Island, the wet ocean kingdom of fishers. And what may you ask did these dwarves take as their symbol, the symbol of their mighty home? Well, you see, it's a great white shark, of course. And the great white shark is screaming. It is terrifying. Anywho, now these dwarves are a fairly crafty bunch, and they have for themselves an idea for a fortress. A fortress with a bit of a strange layout. And what they're looking to do is to make a fortress out here, in the water. Wouldn't that be wild? And very well protected, too. Yes, if this ends up working out for these dwarves, then they stand to have one of the best protected fortresses around. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. And actually, first things first, because I noticed those waves washing in over our wagon, I'm going to put a pile up here away from the water. And just like that. Because we really don't want our food and drinks washing away out into the sea. <laughs> That'd be a pretty crappy start. Now then, anyways, our plan is to make a fortress out here in the water. And you may say, well, Krug Smash dwarves can't swim. What you're saying is craziness. And yes, it might well be. But our plan is to wait until winter. And assuming we have a nice, cold, long winter, then the dwarves can come out here and actually walk across the ice and carve through it to build some supports underneath the water. And I will note too that this water really isn't that deep. In some areas, it's only one Z level down. And I think it's in that area we'll be making our fortress. But first, we're gonna have to wait till winter to see if we can even do this. So we have a ways to go, which is good because we have a lot to do. Now in our wagon here, we have a bunch of wood and stone. Wood because I wasn't too sure if we'd have a lot of trees here, which we do, so that's a waste. And stone because there is an aquifer here. We are right next to the ocean and so it's to be expected, but we're going to need to use a lot of stone, a lot of stone. And so what we're going to do is build a couple of Mason's workshops, just right over here, because we're going to want to start turning that stone into blocks, which will help stretch out our resources a bit. That's going to be necessary. I don't know how far down the aquifer is, and so we might very well be able to get down there and get some stone, but just in case, I'm going to set those dwarves to the task, and they're just going to keep turning rocks into blocks all year long. And let's see, what else do we have to do? Well, actually, taking a look at the map here, you can see that there are some giant crows in the area, which shouldn't give us too much trouble. But I will note that we are in a savage area, elven territory. And both this forest and the sea next to us are known to be savage regions. And so we can expect to see a whole bunch of giant creatures and maybe even animal people. Which is a little bit spooky, but mm, we'll cross bridges when we get to them. Also, another thing we're going to be doing is building a farm plot up here on the surface in which we're going to be growing grapes and spinach. And then down underground, we're also carving out some small quarters for our dwarves. Nothing too flashy, it's just going to be a temporary sort of thing. But we're going to need somewhere to shake the salt water out of our beards. Very important. And now that we have some projects queued up, I thought we would take a quick look at our expedition leader, named Cybrek. Cybrek Togalastesh, a woodcutter. Now, Cybrek here seems like an odd one. First off, she is very thin, has a jutting chin, has clean-shaven hair, like all of these dwarves. Every single one of these dwarves has a clean-shaven head, as well as aquamarine eyes, golden hair, when they do have hair, and they all have tan skin as well. But as for Cybrek's mindset in particular, well, she never deliberates before acting to the point of being considered thoughtless, which isn't the best trait for a leader, I don't think. But it also says she has low self-esteem and is intellectually stubborn. Also, not the best traits. Although that being said, she's not envious of others, presents herself modestly, which I can respect. Oh, and she also easily develops positive sentiments and is friendly. Well, that's good, at least. Ugh, but <laughs> it also says she's quick to anger and doesn't handle stress well. Okay, well, I'm not too sure what to make of you, sister, but I suppose we'll see how things play out very shortly. And actually, while we're on the subject of a shortly, this is intended to be a short fort, as you saw in the intro. And so this project here should not extend farther than this one episode, okay? I've got a little bit of a problem where I get attached to the dwarves and make a big old thing out of these, but it's not going to happen this time, okay? All right, anywho, let's move on. 
Now, we're gonna have to spend some time nicening this place up a little bit. It's all carved out, but we have to get some furniture in there. And I would also like to dig down to see if we can actually access stone. So, let's get to it. We'll start by digging a little tunnel down this way here. Just like that. There we go. And we'll keep that going down a little bit. Well, no such luck. We hit damp soil down here, and we're still in a layer of sand, so... We're not gonna have any access to new stone for a while. A damn shame, but it's fine. Back up here in the actual fortress, you can see things are coming right along. We have the dwarves making some nice wooden floors here, so I don't have to walk on the dirt. And also, we do now have some doors in place, as well as some tables and chairs. And I did actually designate this meeting hall here as an inn as well. An inn that is open to visitors from outside. An inn known as the Yellow Candies. It's not very well appointed for the time being, but we're still getting it all set up. I'm excited to see what sort of visitors we end up getting. It should be pretty interesting. Now then, having a look at the day, it is the 19th of Hematite currently, early summer, so we still have a bit to go before winter. And so I think I'm going to keep things running for a little bit, just so we can progress a bit farther. I shall return when the weather cools, my friends. We'll be right back. All right, and there we are, you bearded bastards. We've had some time go by, and now the frosty winds are blowing in off the sea. And I believe Arel Gulnas is ready for the winter ahead. I sure as hell hope so, anyways. Having a look at the date, it is now the 3rd of Moonstone, early winter. And so I am anticipating a freeze coming up shortly. And before it does happen, I suppose we can have a quick look at the fortress. You can see it's pretty much good to go. It's a small and highly functional fortress with plenty of storage because, well, we've had a bunch of giant Kias in the area, but not at the time being, thankfully. They stole some of our stuff, but nothing very important. So I figured it best if we stored our stuff inside. Also, you can see here that we do have a couple of visitors here now, including Aban, a Marks Dwarf, Moma is a Mace Dwarf, and Gabat, a human bard, all kind of just relaxing here in the Yellow Candies, having some nice grape wine and enjoying a spinach roast, perhaps. Sounds good to me. Now, if you have looked down this way, you can see all of our rock blocks. We do have a ton of them now, as well as some corkscrew down this way and some pipe sections, as well as a ton of mechanisms, because I've got some plans, some crazy plans, and I'm very excited to see them in play. <laughs> Truly. Oh, and would you look at that? Yeah, it looks like everything has just frozen up at the 10th of Moonstone. All right. Now then, we can get right down to it, and... This is going to be a bit treacherous, I think, because it's kind of a gambling game, really. At some point, this water is all going to unfreeze, and if the dwarves are still working on our structure, then they will all drown, which won't be great for anybody, certainly not the dwarves. And so we're going to have to pull the dwarves out before it gets too late in the year. But that's the thing, because it could unthaw before that even. There's not a specified date where everything's going to turn back into water. And so let's get straight to it. I do have the game pause right now, just a heads up on that. And we're going to start planning our structure out in this featureless icy wasteland. Now, let's see. All right, there we go. The start of it is all planned out. You can see here we're going to have four main support columns. And the actual platform is going to be kind of a skewed square. And it's going to kind of angle upwards at the top here. Now, at these four corners, if you have a look down, we're going to channel through the ice to this level. And this is where we're going to build the supports right above the earth, which is just below. Now, I am also intending to make this entire structure raised up from the water as well, just so that when the winter comes and everything freezes up, goblins or other creatures can't just walk across the ice or to the fortress. Just an extra moat of protection. No, pun intended, really. And also, over this way here, I'm going to start building a bridge, one that can retract. That's going to be kind of important if we want the dwarves to get over to the platform after everything thaws, you know. All right, so there we have it. This is how we're going to get started. Get to it, dwarves. We have no time to spare. I am super paranoid about this right now, honestly. We have so much to do, and the ocean could thaw out at any time. Okay, all right, things are coming along. Just gonna kind of keep skipping forward like this in little chunks. Still moving quickly here, I have linked up all the support pillars with this tunnel through the ice, and I do intend on building a little bit of a, a passage through there for a specific purpose. We'll get to that in a little bit. Bridge is coming along nicely. Very good. The second level of some of the support columns are finished now. Excellent. And up here, we're going to start building a walkway between them. It'll be a simple start on the second level. And we are making it out of wood too, just because we are sort of low on stone. All right, and back down underneath the ice, those tunnels are being dug out, very good. And you can see I do have some bridges planned up as well. It's going to take a lot of doing to get those things all set, but we're gonna try our best. 
Having a look at the date, it is the 10th of Opal Midwinter, so it's been about a month already. <laughs> That's a little terrifying. We still have a bunch I would like to get done. A lot of the bridges underwater are almost completed. Mm, about a third of them anyways, at least a quarter. Excellent, very good. Keep it up, dwarves. And then up here on the top of the platform, I kind of have this little suspended room in which we're going to have levers that will be used to control the drawbridge and the bridges under the ice. Had to get those in place before we could link anything up. And we are going to get right to that. Although I'm starting to get a little bit spooked. As we can see here, it is now the 9th of Obsidian, late winter. So it's already been almost two months. <laughs> I don't know, playing a risky game here. We'll go a little bit longer. But I don't want to be foolish with this, certainly. Yeah, things are coming along, but... Mm, yeah, I don't know, I think I'm gonna pull them out of here. If I unthaws and they'll all die, and that, that, that would be just terribly foolish. Alright dwarves, let's get to it. Everyone out. Alright, and here they go, back up to the surface, fantastic. It is the 14th of Obsidian right now, and it looks like they're all returning to the fortress nice and safe and sound. Although I am noticing that we have two upset dwarves here, which is a little asinine. What the hell's wrong with you guys? This is a fine fortress, you damn ninnies. It looks like they're mostly upset about not being able to pray to certain gods recently. Which is a load of malarkey. Because we have a temple right here. Go on, get in there, you idiot. Yeah, and would you look at that. Everything just thawed out. And it is the 20th of Obsidian, so we just barely made it out of there. Yikes. Okay, well, good. And having a quick look, yep, nobody's drowning, fantastic. But now, unfortunately, we have to wait till next winter to continue our project. Which really, really stinks. But, oh well. Actually, you know, I suppose we can come up here and continue work on the top of the platform. The dwarves can get over just fine now. Yeah, let's get to it. Why the hell not? Come on, dwarves. Do not tarry. There we are. Very good. Just be careful around those waves, all right? It can get a bit treacherous on that walkway. And you know, because we have so much to do and a long time to wait, I'm just going to advance time once more. Again, I would really like to cram all this stuff into a single episode. And so that's what we're going to do. I shall return when the hoarfrost coats the rocky shore. Just a moment. Okay, we're back a little bit early here because we've run into a problem, a very serious problem. A problem named Desli Ukapabat, a werehorse. A large horse twisted into humanoid form. It is crazed for blood and flesh. Its eyes glow amber and its black hair is long and straight. Hey, okay, well, not a good news, not at all. All right, now let's have a look. The horse appears to be over here to the north of our fortress down on the rocky beach. And if we have a look around, well, it doesn't look like anybody is very, very close to it. We have a few dwarves out here working on the fields. So I think if I just order all the dwarves into the fortress, then we can be safe in there. So I guess that's how we're going to do it. Also, I will note too that the elves are here currently, trading at our depot. We haven't even looked at their wares. And worst comes to worst, they will help slow down that werehorse, which is excellent. Alrighty, let's go dwarves, get the hell into the fortress. And as they work their way there, I'm going to keep an eye on this werehorse. Let's see what happens. Alright, here it comes, moving swiftly across the beach down towards the fortress. We do have a small pasture filled with animals too, and those are very likely to slow down this horse, big time. Yeah, here it goes. Attacking a mule right now. Wonderful, much better than killing one of our dwarves. Or infecting an elf for that matter. Yeah, it's really letting this poor mule have it. And it killed it and is now moving on. Southward, towards the other animals. It's now ripping through a water buffalo and it looks like the elves are trying to move away from the depot now with their animals. Couldn't have picked a worse time, really. When this water buffalo dies, it's gonna go straight for them. Yeah, and here it goes. Moving in and attacking an elf. An elf who's unconscious and dead. And now it's moving in at the other. Oof, yeah, a werehorse is a tough customer. All right, it killed one of their yaks, and I believe the other elf died too. And now it appears just to be sitting here, looming over its quarry. Oh, but it has spotted one of our dwarves and is moving in towards the fortress now. Mmm. I thought, anyways. Oh, no. It's killing an alpaca. All right, well, that works for me. And now it's moving down the slope over here. Oh, oh, and it's at the second entrance. Man, oh man, I forgot that was there. I guess I'll lock this door real quick. Oh, that could have been so bad. Following the horse once more, it appears to be ripping the door off the hinges. Come on, you damn thing. Turn back into your normal form and get the hell out of here, will ya? Okay, there we go. Thankfully, it has turned back into a human and is now running away. 
but I would absolutely love it if my dwarves can get out there and stop her from getting away. So I made a couple squads and I'm going to send them out. Although I doubt they'll be able to catch her. Oh, 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 almost. Come on. Okay, she's panicking. She's over. Oh, 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 she just fell in the water. This is very dangerous right here. Okay, dwarves, don't go after her anymore. She's down in the water. Let's uh just, we'll, we'll cool it. I'm going to disband your squads and everyone get back to the fortress, please. And there you go. Very good. And as for our werehorse friend down in the water, <laughs> fantastic. Taken by the sea. Serves you right, you bastard. You, you dip. Very good work there. There was only one attack in that whole combat, and it was this mechanic pushing the werehorse into the water. Good on you. I'll tell you what, you deserve a nickname. You dib? From this day forward, you shall be known as Horsebreaker. Quite apt. Now then, okay, dwarves, once more we shall relax and just uh, try to get some stuff done before next winter. It's still the fourth of slate mid spring, so we have a ways to go. But I'm hoping we won't have any more interruptions. We will be right back. Okay, and we have returned once more. And as you can see, things are going just swimmingly. Right now it is the third of Moonstone early winter, so things should be freezing up very shortly. And before it does, I suppose I'll go over a few things that happened over the course of the year. Things that were not shown. Uh, at one point we had a giant cougar pop up in the area, and it savagely mauled one of our planters. But they survived, and they're, they're still hanging in there, wherever the hell they are. Also, if you have a look at our tavern here, you'll notice that there are a ton of poets and bards all over the place currently. I think it's an entertainment group, and so I imagine the dwarves are quite enjoying their stories. Very interesting. Also, you can see this lasher over here, a human named Getak, a renowned adventurer actually, and she has with her an artifact silver whip that she had used to slay a hydra. Very cool, right? And it should be noted too that she is wearing a hydra nail bracelet on her wrist from that creature, which is pretty damn badass. Oh, also you can see here that we do have a black bear in the fortress too, a tame black bear that was left here by the elves after they were destroyed by that werehorse. It makes for a pretty good fortress pet. Its presence is greatly appreciated. And that pretty much does it for fortress news. Oh, and would you look at that? Looks like everything just froze up. Yes, it most certainly has and I have made sure to pause the game as well. Okay, dwarves, we're ready for winter number two. This time we have to be sure to finish our project. No dilly-dallying, dwarves. Let's get to it. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is dig some channels down through the ice so we can access the bridges underneath. Very important. There we go. And I imagine now they'll be heading down to finish their work. And yes, it does look like they are fantastic. And be quick about it, dwarves. We still have a lot to do here. All right, we're doing pretty well. I have a different construction going on over here for another project. I know this is all very confusing, but just bear with me. It'll be revealed in time, my friends. Looking at the date, and it is already the 9th of Opal, midwinter. And I feel like we're not getting a whole hell of a lot done. Unfortunately, I hadn't taken it into account, but water had frozen over all these bridges down here. And we have to re-dig them out if we want to do any work on them. And that's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Of course. Alright, still going. We have our mechanic working away, or <laughs> rather, eating now. Come on, you gotta work faster than that. We're almost out of time. We have dug out many of those bridges now, but uh, not nearly enough. I don't want to have to wait another year. Damn it. It is the 12th of Obsidian right now, so we only have about eight more days. Assuming everything thaws out on the same exact day. <laughs> Might be foolish to think that, though. We will let it go a little bit farther, though. Come on, almost there. Get as much work as we can done. All right, now it's the 17th. All right, we shouldn't put it off anymore. Come on, dwarves, everyone out of the water. Get back to the fortress. Just disappointing, really. I really thought we had it this year. Oh well. Oh boy, and it all just turned back, too. That was a close call. Yikes. And yes, everyone looks to be safe and sound once more, for the most part. Actually, the dwarves over here seem to be in pretty foul moods now, for a variety of reasons. First off, seeing those elf corpses outside did not do them any good. Plus, we also had a strange mood dwarf at one point just recently, and they went berserk and killed a human and then were killed themselves, which only worsened their moods. Well, I really hope we can make it till next year, but I suppose we'll see soon enough. Now, before we skip ahead any farther, I would like to go over my plan here. I've left you guys in the dark long enough. Well, you see, this is our fortress here, kind of a rough L-shaped design. And down below, at the base of these support columns, are those bridges. 
Now my plan is to link up those bridges to a lever up in this room here, and then when this lever is pulled, the area within these bridges is going to be locked up away from everything outside. And so hopefully if anything swims into this middle region here, like some fish or other creatures, then we can just trap them in there. And once that happens, we can use these screw pumps here to pump the water out from in between those bridges and back out into the ocean. And then the dwarves can come down and harvest the fish that are down on the sea floor. Now, I've never done anything like this before, and I don't know how it's going to work, but I don't know, I've got a good feeling about it. Anyways, we're pushing up on the end of the episode here, so I am going to just skip ahead to the next winter, and we'll also try to finish up the top of this platform. That would be excellent. My friends, I shall return once more when Giggin's hammer strikes the Anvil of Autumn. See you in just a moment. Alright, and we are back once more, and winter has just arrived. Currently, it is the second of Moonstone in our third year, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. And this past year has been punishingly painful for the dwarves. Big time. We had another werehorse attack, and this time it seemed to be a different strain of the curse. It was a brown werehorse with green eyes, and this attack was much, much worse. We unfortunately lost about, uh, six dwarves, I think. And so down underneath here, you can see we have a new tomb built. And in it, we have a bunch of coffins and slabs, just to memorialize those poor lost dwarves. Quite a damn shame. And also, if you look over here, you can see our new bedrooms as well. We have a whole bunch of them. Oh, and, uh, hmm. Up over this way, we can see a, well, a were tortoise. One of our dwarves was bit by one this past year and was in turn cursed. And so now they're locked up in this room here with another dwarf who was accidentally locked in there with them and who was just killed. <sighs> but another bit of good news is that you can see all this stone here that we managed to find. Yeah, it turns out there's actually a ton of stone here at the coastline, which is just dandy. Yeah, this past year has been quite a roller coaster. Oh, would you have a look at that? Looks like everything just froze up. Okay, we're going to do it this time. No doubt about it. We have to. Okay, dwarves, let's get to it. All right, now, first things first, we're going to have to get a dwarf out there to carve out those bridges once more. Such a pain. And unfortunately, we still only have one mining pick. Rather, I guess we started with two, but one of them was stolen by a giant Kia along the way. Damn things. Shouldn't be a problem, though, I don't think. I'm telling you, we're going to do it this year. All right, here's our mechanic hooking up those bridges. It's Horsebreaker. Go figure. Good job, my bastard. Keep it up. Just need somebody to get up here and mine out these bridges. Come on, dwarves. Hurry it up, hurry it up. Already the 27th of Moonstone. Time passes so fast, it's crazy. All right, we are getting there. I think we only have two more bridges left to be linked up. That's pretty darn good. And as such, I would like to build another little something down here as well. We're going to need a way for the dwarves to get down to the sea floor when it's all drained out in here. And so we're going to build something right here. Just got to channel away this ice first. I'm very excited to see how this works. Actually, this past year we saw a basking shark out in the water. A huge sea beast. Man, oh man, if we managed to hunt one of those things down, we could feed our dwarves for a year. So exciting. All right, and I'm having a look at our bridges here, and it appears they're all linked up now. Fantastic. So exciting. And you can see I'm getting a bit overexcited this way here, because now I've got all sorts of other crazy plans going on. Not sure if we'll have enough time to complete them, but I suppose we'll see soon enough. Looking over this way, you can see the stairway down to the seafloor is completed. Very good. We also have a lever there. That will be used to control this bridge here at the bottom, just to prevent water from coming in on the stairway. Can never be too safe. All right, looking back down here, and we are completed. Very good. I figured I'd put some wooden supports down here. Completely unnecessary, mechanically speaking, but I like them. All right. I'm happy to say I believe we're all set here, which is just absolutely thrilling. And it is currently the 11th of Obsidian, and so we managed to do it really just in time. <laughs> Excellent. Very good job, dwarves. Now then, let's watch. It's always so entertaining to watch this spring thaw. <laughs> Wonderful. Just gotta love it. Alrighty, dwarves, what do you say? How about we test out these bridges? That would be excellent, don't you think? Let's give it a try. If someone could be kind enough to pull this lever, please. Uh, thank you very much. Alright, here comes a dwarf. Pulling the lever, and... The bridges are up. Beautiful. Except I don't know why they're red. Why would that be? Puzzling. Ah, oh, they're covered with mud. Okay. Well, that'll do it, I suppose. Anyways, now that this whole interior area is blocked away from the outer ocean, how about we get some dwarves into this pump room here to see how fast we can drain it out? That should be pretty entertaining. Okay, and here we go. Water is already being pumped out. 
very quickly. That's only one pump there. Oh, and here come the rest. Oh, wow. Yeah, it appears to be working very rapidly down here, but I suppose we'll wait and see. Really hoping at this point I didn't leave any gaps. That would be terribly stupid. Mm, but I think we're good, actually. It looks like most of this water here is actually pretty shallow already. Very, very good. Yeah, in fact, that'll about do it. Most of this water here that you can see is only about two units deep, which is basically nothing. And it should start evaporating very quickly. In fact, how about we get this lever pulled and take a little walkabout down on the sea floor? There we go. Bridge is open. Oh, and there's a dwarf. Just nonchalantly strolling around down there. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow, that really worked very well, actually. Extremely exciting. Think of the possibilities. Here, we'll get this little walkway closed up again. And we'll pull this lever here, too. Just to get those bridge reopened. I'm excited to see that water rush back in. Should be pretty cool. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so cool. Oh, yeah, that really is something. Such possibilities. Yeah, I've never done anything like that before. And now that we can see it's working as I had intended, we'll just have to keep our eyes open to see if we could find any giant sea life. And then, of course, I suppose we'll have to hope it swims into this area here, which is a bit of a limiting factor. Kind of stinks, but oh well. Well, you know, I guess that about does it for the fortress. We have proven that we can make a fortress out here on the water. That's something I've not done before. And secondarily, we have also figured out a way to trap ocean life down here underneath the fortress. And so, I guess the only thing left to do is just to wrap this place up. Although, I'm gonna be frank with you. My bastards, I am left wanting. I mean, you gotta admit, it would be pretty difficult to leave the fortress right now. We haven't even seen it in action yet. And I would dearly love to catch something down underneath. On top of that, I mean, we did make a fortress platform out here in the water. But there's no actual fortress here yet. And don't you think we should really accomplish something in that direction? I certainly do. Yeah, you know, I think we're looking at one more episode of Arel Gulnas Kithil Negra Rosar Negit Kar. Because, I mean, I think we just have to. Hmm, you know, I am seeing these fish down here. Oh, uh, herring. And it is tempting to close up the bridges and see if we can trap them, but they are considered vermin in the game, and they act a little bit different than normal animals. And so I don't think we can actually trap them in here. But that is another thing I would dearly love to try, because I believe we can use fisher dwarves to actually just catch them in animal traps. And then after we do that, I think we might be able to do something with them. Either butcher them up or possibly put them in an aquarium, which could be very interesting. In any event, I'm looking to toy around with that a bit farther. And also as some further tantalization, if you have a look up here on our platform, you could see a future farm plot up on this suspended terrace. It's filled with water currently, fed by these dwarves using buckets up top, and now that it's nice and muddy, we can actually grow crops here, and we'll no longer need access to the land. Very cool, right? In short order, we should have a fully contained fortress out here on the ocean, and I do greatly anticipate seeing it in its completed form next episode. The final episode of Arel Gulnas Kethil Migrir Rosar Negit Kar, Water Island, the Wet Ocean Kingdom of Fishers. And no, I do not intend on letting this go any farther than the next episode. That's gonna be it. Gonna cut it off. Okay? Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, my bearded bastards.